you said something about how you envision a relationship between men and women yeah. that's kind of beyond this this world. Yes. I would love to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds quite theological, doesn't it? It's awesome. Um, well, okay, I suppose, I mean, one thing I want to say also is like this, this, this type of reality, this sliver of reality that we're talking about, like the internet thing, like the Twitter thing where people call you a Nazi and it's so small. Like I want I just want to say mm-hmm. what, when I was talking about the sun and the outside and you know, like the enjoyment of nature, you know, and, and by the way, can I just say like, you know, just because the Nazis liked nature or had some theories about nature, like that doesn't make nature Nazi. And lots of people before the Nazis and after are very into nature. And like, this is partly a personal thing in the sense that I got very, very ill last summer. You know, I was suffering from like very serious like alcohol addiction issues. And in fact, Daniel, who everyone hates, you know, uh, he, <laughs> allegedly, who is some terrible person, you know, helped me recover in this extremely kind gesture of friendship, in fact. You know, a brave one, in fact. And I think it's, it's about bravery. A lot about, you know, like friendship is about bravery and courage and like these are the kind of values and virtues that I really uh, think are, that everyone can have, you know, and, you know, so there is this kind of dimension and basically like I nearly lost my foot and I was very, very ill and like I had to recover and I took time off work and, you know, like I spent partly in gratitude for like not losing my foot and also recovering and being able to be sober. Like I walked around a lot, like I walked around with Daniel and other people and, for hours and hours and hours a day outside, you know, in like in nature mm-hmm. and just had this sort of like ongoing revelation really about like how beautiful everything was and like how amazing it is to actually like be alive and personally to be sober and to be able to walk. And, you know, and, and, and it's not to say, you know, that be- it's not, you know, of course there are people with mobility issues and so on and it's not to say like this is the only way that one can relate to nature, but it's just a very personal sort of thing. And, you know, and actually like thinking about you know, the outside, as it were, and, like, the world beyond the internet, beyond denunciation. You're like, what's what's more beautiful than sitting, talking with a with a friend about something for no reason? Like, having a conversation about a concept or an idea, you know, sitting outside in the sun. And, you know, the sun or the moon or the sky, like, they sit, they're the most egalitarian things ever, right? Because everybody experiences them one way or another. You know, like, they are there for everyone. Like, you can't privatise the sun. You can't politicise the sun, where you could try. But but there is something, like, beyond the political, in that sense. There is, some, there is something kind of so unreal, like, virtual, literally, about sort of online life. And, you know, I mean, I guess just personally, having spent so much time outside, and like, recovering from being so ill and, and you know, realising, I suppose, just very simply, like, the simple things in life. You know, like, how beautiful it is to see, like, a bird fly and you know, I don't know, to be outside, to enjoy the sun, and I don't know, like, the, these things, you know, are actually like a revelation about beauty and about the world and about one's place in the world in a certain way that's very different from a kind of this sort of, yeah, I don't know, dreary, modern capture, like, you mm. know, and I think there is a kind of question someone raised on Twitter, the, uh, the only probably interesting question, which was like, but aren't there actually some reactionary elements to what I'm saying? Like, it's like almost like a Heideggerian thing in mm. some ways, right? That, that that my critique of like technology in the modern world, in a certain way, you know, the celebration of paganism. By the way, I just want to clarify, like, I, I don't uh, think that we should engage in human sacrifice today um, in any way. Uh, I think that was really referring to, like, prehistory and evidence of human sacrifice and, you know, the Aztecs and then uh, elsewhere. But but in any case, it's, it's something interesting to think about, anthropologically, for sure. Um, but, you know, perhaps not, not to, like, actually do. Um, if the sacrificial just, victim was a volunteer... Yeah. I would consider the ethics to be at least debatable. This is Bataille's question. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. I mean, and like Bataille is very interesting. I mean, for thinking about the left sacred and, you know, like that kind of question, can you sort of resacralize the world? I mean, yeah, this has all been discussed before. Mm-hmm. This is not new, any of this, really. Not to mention there's obviously a long standing and vibrant tradition of drawing on the relationship with nature as a crucial resource in left-wing emancipatory liberation struggles of all kinds. Right? Yeah, so, I mean, of course. It's sort of obvious. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, like, none of us would exist without the sun. I mean, we'd all, like, not, not exist without nature. I mean, it's, you know, we are part of nature. And also the relationship to the land as yeah. a kind of emotional and community resource that really powers a lot of the most powerful and significant 
forms of resistance to kind of capitalism or whatever you want to call it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And like there are, you know, it's very complicated to think about kind of ecology and politics. But yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, this idea of um, that, you know, the left shouldn't mention land or soil because these have been captured right. by nationalist projects. You know, that le- that concedes too much ground, literally concedes the ground to the right. You know, as if and, we can't but, talk about mm-hmm. specific relations to so you know like of course we can and this new film a recent film arcadia is very interesting on this point which is a kind of anti-capitalist left film but it's about folk traditions it's about the mm-hmm. land you know it's paul wright to sort of documentary using found fo- mm-hmm. footage um and the like these sorts of things seem to be like and and mark's work in acid communism was really about this as well mm-hmm. you know and, and and we have to like it seems vital in like the age of like total ecological destruction environmental destruction to think about the, you know, the land, we can't just say, you know, oh, some nationalists talk about the land, therefore we can't talk about it. Oh, by the way, on the not being a Nazi front, I just want to clarify, uh, I like, I really hate the state. I'm anti-authoritarian, which includes people telling other people and dictating what what they can and can't read, what they can and can't think about, and who they can and can't see or speak to. Um, so not a Nazi in any of those sense. I'm very against war, for example. I have no military uh, desires whatsoever other than to maybe, you know, conquer the, the troubles of one's own heart or something. <laughs> but, you know, this is... A, <laughs> you know, I, and, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just want people to feel free. I want them not to feel afraid. I want them to be able to speak honestly and freely. And we've had some really interesting conversations about honesty, you know, and, like, lots of people we're speaking to these days are very interested in this idea of radical honesty, and what does it mean to, you know, to speak freely, to not feel afraid, to not feel anxious all the time? You know, and for a long time, I really did feel like this. I felt very, very anxious, you know, partly because of the addiction problem. And but also just this like fear of, you know, saying the wrong thing or, you know, having such fragile relationships with people that you feel guilty and you, I don't know, you, you sort of and then the loudest people are the ones who kind of grab your attention and sort of take your money and, you know, like are sort of dominate you in a certain mm. way and, and I think a lot of people are in that feeling maybe anxious and weak mm. you know that they they don't know what to think and then you have people telling you what to think but but mm. they're just people too I mean who are these people telling you what to think 